right here. There we go. All right, well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining this morning. Um, uh, my name is Jeff Richardson. I'm the data coordinator for the Lifespan Biostatistics, Epidemiology, and Research Design Corps. I'm also a, a REDCap administrator for Lifespan. And yeah, thank you for joining us today on the um, e-consent presentation. Our learning objectives today are to understand the e-consent framework. Um, we wanna know uh, what it is and how it works. We'll review and explore the REDCap e-consent template and get familiarized with how to use it. We're going to learn how to customize the e-consent template to create an e-consent process that works for your project. And we'll review some best practices as well as some common pitfalls to avoid. Um, we'll leave some, some time at the end for Q&A, but also at any time, um, please feel free to cut me off if you have a question um, during the presentation, if anything isn't clear, or if you would like some uh, further information. Uh, this presentation is being recorded, uh, FYI, and hopefully it's, it's going to answer any um, questions that you have and ease any skepticism or reluctance you might be feeling. Um, the goal is to leave here feeling comfortable and confident using REDCap for e-consenting participants in your own project or study. So we'll begin with a brief review. What is informed consent? Um, don't worry for anyone having city certification flashbacks. I promise that this is going to be brief. I found a nice, concise, one-sentence definition, which goes as follows. Informed consent is a voluntary expression of consent by a competent subject after sufficient information disclosure about the research. It must be written in a language that is easily understood by the subjects. There needs to include adequate information to allow for an informed decision about participation and must continue to provide information as the study progresses or as the subject or situation requires. It must minimize the possibility of coercion or undue influence in vulnerable <clears throat> excuse me, populations. The subject must be given an appropriate amount of time to ask questions and discuss research protocol with family and friends before deciding. And informed consent must be documented by means of a written, signed, and dated informed consent form. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, quickly, for anyone who may not know what REDCap is, it stands for Research Electronic Data Capture. Uh, it's a secure web application for building and managing online surveys and databases. While REDCap can be used to collect virtually any type of data in any environment, it is specifically geared to support online and offline data capture for research studies and operations. The REDCap Consortium, a vast network, a support network of collaborators, is composed of thousands of active institutional partners in over 100 countries who utilize and support their own individual REDCap systems. So today we're gonna to discuss how to document informed consent electronically using REDCap. Uh, REDCap again is a computer-based platform for, um, that can be used for consenting research, research participants. It implements consent forms through an online survey. And participants digitally sign their consent with REDCap's signature field type. Um, the informed consent process should be similar to when completed in person. Uh, we do not want to just send off the consent surveys and went, wait for the participants to return them. Um, the researcher should be in um, contact either via telephone or Zoom and collaboratively complete this consent um, in a way to, uh, similarly to doing it in person. 
While the words survey and form might be used interchangeably when casually speaking with one another, um, I'll be using them deliberately today as they are defined by REDCAP. And these terms have specific and distinct meanings. Um, your REDCAP project is a space to build and manage and store all things related to your research study. So the data, data collection tools, and uh, any staff working on the project, all the logging of any changes are gonna be stored here. And your project will include data collection instruments. Uh, these can be surveys or forms. Um, in, with surveys, data is entered online and accessed through a link. Anyone with a link can complete the survey. Uh, no REDCap account is required. For forms, however, um, they must have a REDCap account to log in and um, access data entry forms. And the data is entered from within REDCap by uh, study personnel. So why is this called a framework? Informed consent is not merely a form that is signed. It is a process in which the subject has an understanding of the research and its risks. Enabling the framework alone does not provide an e-consent process. It merely provides the general framework or mechanism to allow for an e-consent. Uh, it does this by providing standardized tools to allow for the implement implementation of the e-consent process. So the e-consent framework adds two things to the typical survey taking process. Uh, the auto archiver and um, uh, the um, sorry, an extra certification page for the participant uh, to confirm the submission is correct, and the PDF auto archiver, um, where PDF files of responses are automatically captured and stored in REDCap upon completion of the consent survey. This serves as a traditional hard copy consent form that has previously been stored inside a file cabinet. Before a participant completes the e-consent survey, uh, an extra certification page is added to the end of the survey that displays an inline PDF copy of their survey responses in which they will be asked to confirm that all information in the document is correct. Once they confirmed all is correct, the survey will then be marked as complete and the survey will not be considered complete until they fulfill the certification step. And, and so just briefly to review this, here's the, um, at the end of the survey, they click next. And here's the uh, extra certification page. Where they have to click that uh, I certify button. And you can watch that one more time, uh, click next. And here's the, the um, certification. And this is that extra step required. Um, upon completion of the survey, a static copy of their responses in the form of a consent specific PDF will be automatically stored in the project's file repository, um, which can be uh, reached by clicking here in purple. And this serves as hard copies for all the signed e-consents by the participants. Uh, the PDF is consent specific. It will have the values of the e-consent framework options inserted at the bottom of each page in the PDF as extra documentation of the identity of the person who is consenting. The version IP address of the person's computer and the date time for the e-consent are documented. For complete documentation of the e-consent, the participant signed copy and a researcher's signature form are needed. And we're going to get that to the researcher's signature form a little bit later. So moving on, uh, I'm excited to introduce the e-consent template today, uh, which contains modular components for accomplishing an e-consent. This is a lifespan specific process for e-consent developed in close collaboration with our IRB, although the content should be generalizable to all REDCap instances. To get started using the e-consent template, simply 
create a new project by clicking uh, click new project at the top uh, left here in purple. Uh, choose use a template and then select the e-consent template. Um, the project will already be set up for you with the surveys enabled. And here we're going to show how to create a new project in REDCap using the e-consent template um, and pretty much what I just described. Click on new project. You want to give it a title, purpose, and, but you want to use a template and then choose the e-consent template. Create project. And it's, it's as easy as that. After setting up your new project, I highly encourage you to explore each instrument carefully and think about how it could be used in your study. Um, I'll briefly review the instruments included in the template, which are sort of shown here. This is the online designer of the eConsent template when you, when, you, uh, when you download that. So the first instrument is the informed consent and authorization example. And this is a survey and it contains the standard layout and sections needed for, the, for informed consent. And I call this instrument sort of, it's the workhorse of the e-consent template where um, uh, almost all of the uh, of your um, informed consent is gonna be stored here. The next instrument is the researcher signature form. It's meant for researcher use only and allows the researcher to dis digitally sign the e-consent following the participant's completion. A final PDF of the signed participant e-consent and researcher signed form can be downloaded to be emailed to the participant. The third instrument shown here is the HIPAA research authorization example, a, a standard research authorization layout it's study specific and to be used only when your protocol has been approved to allow for research authorization instead of in uh, informed consent. The child assent example is another survey. Um, and to, for, for, for brevity for today's um, uh, presentation, we're gonna be ignoring these two instruments, the uh, HIPAA research authorization and the child assent example. The final instrument in the informed consent in the e-consent template is the consent sent to participant form, which is an internal data entry form for researchers to use for tracking and documenting when the participant completed e-consent um, and that is has been downloaded and emailed to the participant. After fully exploring them, you may delete instruments from the e-consent template if not being used for your project. Um, and I'll quickly show you how to do this. So go into the designer. And again, to delete the instruments, click on choose action and delete. And the other one we're not gonna use today it's the HIPAA research authorization example. You can feel free to explore those on your own, um, but yeah, we're just gonna leave them out for today. So that's how to delete instruments. Okay, so the e-consent template um, contains instructional and study specific fields. Um, these contain guidance, tips, and instructions to help the researcher. It includes, uh, you know, even text formatting instructions are included here. So after thoroughly reading through these instructions, you can go ahead and delete these instructional fields um, because they are not intended to be shown to the participant. And I'll quickly show you how to delete the fields. If you just click on the instrument and here, there you see the instructional field. Uh, if you just click on that red X, uh, you can go ahead and delete them. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm, I'm going to go one by one through the um, in, in, uh, e-consent e template instruments. And the first is the informed consent and authorization example. 
Uh, for simplicity, there's a parental permission portion of this instrument, and, and I've removed that for, for this demonstration. Um, but again, this is a survey with a standard informed consent layout, and it's already divided into the sections needed for informed consent. And uh, right now we're going to take a uh, closer look at that first instrument as it is, as it is viewed from within REDCap. Uh, from the online designer. And this is where you'll customize the template to your uh, specific study. Afterwards, we're going to review the same instrument, but from the participant point of view. So here we go, we click inside. Um, and notice uh, the parts in green text here are, are uh, those that you'll need to update yourself and, and add your information in. Um, and you, so you can see I've already done that. Um, and I've removed most of the instructional fields from this. And so what we're looking at here is a trim, trim down uh, version. But you can see the sections of the informed consent, nature of the research, risks, alternatives. Um, so you can just copy and paste your own information into these fields and, and to make it your own. It's already set up with the branching logic. So if they, you know, if at any point they, they choose not to continue all, they, they won't have to see all this stuff. Um, but yeah, it includes everything, including a witness signature if that's required. Uh, now we're going to take a look at what the participant will see when when they're completing the um, survey. Before getting into it, I want to point out that throughout the survey there are stop fields added by the added at the specific direction of our IRB, which end the survey if a participant um, indicates that they don't want to continue when prompted. So here we're going to open the survey and this is what the participant is going to see when they go online and we're just going to fill it out with them so they enter their name you know they go through each section and mark that they've read it and here's how they add their signature and date They have a spot to ask questions. Um, if, if suppose they do have a question, you can add your own contact information and they can just give you a quick call um, or, or you know, someone should be going through this with them as well. Um, so once they do agree to um, take part in the study, they will enter their own information and sign it. If you need a, if a, a witness signature, there's space required, uh, space provided for that. But here's that extra um, certification page. That's that. Um, so some more key terms. Versioning is a concept where you may give the e-consent a number or alphanumeric designation to represent the current version or state of the form. So if the form is modified after data collection begins, um, then it, it is recommended that a new version be applied. For example, the first version might be one, and after um, collecting the consent of a few participants, maybe a question is modified or added which represents a new version. So you might increment that version to number two and so forth. The e-consent type is optional. Uh, it displays a text label that you might want to display in the PDF footer. Uh, and you can use this to signify the type of e-consent that this survey represents. Um, for example, pediatric or something like that. And the type is often used to distinguish between multiple e-consent forms within a project. 
Um, remember to update the survey settings uh, to reflect the version and date of the e-consent. Uh, do not choose to have an email automatically sent to the participant. They need a copy of the consent with their signature and the researcher's signature. And uh, the survey settings is where you'll update your e-consent type if you choose to. Uh, and now I'll just quickly demonstrate the survey settings here. So if you click on survey settings for that instrument, here's where you can edit this stuff. And you can see the e-consent framework is enabled. You know, don't allow the responses to be edited by the users. Here you can type in the version. Um, And send type is here. And again, don't choose to send that confirmation email um, because we want them to have the researcher signature as well. That's a good segue to the second instrument we're going to review today from the e-consent template. And that's the researcher signature form. Um, this instrument must follow any e-consent survey requiring a, re uh, a researcher signature. It allows the researcher to digitally sign the e-consent document after it's been completed by the participant. Um, it requires the researcher to enter their REDCap username and password to in order to digitally sign the document. Um, if the username or password verification fails three times in a row, the user will be automatically logged out of REDCap, just FYI. So right here, we're taking a look at the researcher signature instrument from two different views. Um, notice is, it is much smaller than the previous instrument and the whole thing can be shown on one page. On the left is uh, viewing the, the um, instrument from within REDCap's online designer. Uh, you can see the stop fields and branching logic uh, behind the scenes. And on the right is what you see when editing the record from within REDCap's red record status dashboard. So record locking is a feature which freezes data, ensuring that users don't accidentally modify it without authorization. Data cannot be easily modified on a locked instrument. The project creator and PI are responsible for ensuring that staff who have been trained and are IRB approved to, inform, to perform consent have user rights enabled for locking, unlocking with e-signature authority. We want to ensure that record locking and customization is enabled for the appropriate staff. Um, in the user rights section, um, this is where you can edit the user privileges to give, give them the, make sure that they have the, um, the, the right rights to perform record locking. Um, and again, here down here is where um, if you, some people find it helpful um, to lock all the records at, at once. Um, and there's a really helpful video actually about record locking here uh, with uh, it's like a four minute video. It's, it's very um, informative. So I encourage you to click on that. Um, again, so if you need to uh, edit uh, user privileges, you go to user rights and then click on the username. To sign the consent as a researcher, the form must be marked as completed and the locked and e-signature boxes checked. This will be indicated with icons, um, a lock, you can see the lock and the green shield there um, in, for, in the participant record. E-signatures are an extension of the record locking and unlocking functionality. Once a data collection instrument has been locked for a given record in the project, a person with e-signature privileges may then apply an e-signature to that form if they wish. The form will display the time it was locked and the user who locked it, 
and all fields on the form will be disabled or read only until someone with lock or unlocking privileges unlocks the form. Although locking a record prevents its data from being modified, the e-signature goes a step farther and serves as the equivalent of a handwritten signature. If a record has been e-signed, then it denotes that, it has, that its data has been both locked to prevent further changes and authorized by a user with e-signature privileges. Similar to the record locking functionality, the e-signature history is also stored in REDCap's data audit trail on the logging page. You can click customize and manage uh, locking e-signatures and you'll have the option of displaying the lock options for each instrument. Here you can also choose to display um, e-signature options on the instrument or not. And um, finally, space is included if you want to provide custom text instead of the, the de default record locking text. The third and final instrument that we're reviewing from the e-consent template today is the shortest of them all. Um, the, the instrument is titled Consent Sent to Participant. And this allows you to document when informed consent has been completed and the necessary documents have been downloaded and emailed to the participant. This is an internal data entry form for researchers to use for their own tracking and documenting purposes. So to download a completed e-consent, um, after the signatures of the participant and researcher, you wanna to navigate to the record homepage for the participant. And you do this by clicking on that blue record ID number. So the number one in this case. You wanna click, um, next you wanna click choose action for the record from the dropdown. So you wanna click that little triangle for the, to get the dropdown uh, to come up. Select download PDF of record data for all instruments. And then this down, once this is downloaded, this can be emailed to the study participant. If your project contains more than your e-consent, you can crop the PDF so it contains only the e-consent portion to send to the participant. Um, after you have downloaded the PDF, um, Following the instructions in the previous slide, <clears throat> uh, you can open the PDF in your browser. And this can be done um, by dragging and dropping the downloaded file onto a new browser tab. Um, these instructions work, uh, you know, this is using Google Chrome, um, FYI. But once that PDF is open in your browser, um, you can go to the upper right hand, click on the upper right hand corner here um, and select the print icon. Um, you want to make sure your print destination is Microsoft print to PDF and then select custom. And then you can, um, oops, sorry. Then you can choose the page numbers um, to include and then this will prompt you to save the new prop PDF, and this can this um, now can be emailed to the participant. Um, it, it's likely that when you finish setting up your e-consent uh, process in REDCap, that the, your IRB is going to want to um, test it out and take a look. Um, so quickly share um, go over how to share the links with the IRB. Um, so for your first survey instrument, the link is always um, found here in the survey distribution tools and this public survey URL. Uh, you should be able to click this link as many times as possible and you will always be directed to the first survey. Links for surveys that are not the first survey in your project are record specific. Um, meaning the links will be unique each time. To obtain links for surveys that are not the first instrument, here's what you must do. 
Um, we want to add a new record and then enter some, um, enter some data and then click save and go to next form. Uh, and it's gonna prompt you to type your, type your username and password in to continue. And then from the next form, if you click on survey options, open survey, you can now copy and paste this URL from the survey that opens. Um, in your project, before, uh, be sure to select leave without saving changes when you're prompted when exiting the form. And you can repeat this as needed for additional, um, at, for additional links. It's important to note that these will be record specific links. So if for some reason the surveys are submitted, the links are no longer going to work. If you do have the user rights to rename a record, you may wanna consider renaming this record to IRB example or something like that. <clears throat> so it's explicitly clear that the record serves this purpose. Once approved by the IRB, you can consider deleting the record, uh, but you will need to repeat the prior steps if asked to provide the survey links again. All right, some other, uh, other tips. Um, when in doubt, consult your IRB. Um, often, a lot of the questions, if you're, if you're going to bring them to us at REDCap support, this is from fre frequently uh, what we're going to tell you. Um, uh, you want to make on making your consent as reader friendly as possible. Since signatures are often illegible, be sure to collect the name on the consent in addition to the signature. Um, if you can, try to keep the design layout similar to the paper version. Um, you want to have a process in place for people who might not have email. And have a plan in place if a user enters the wrong email address and the consent survey bounces back. Um, people might make mistakes on their consent. Um, since the records are locked, they're not going to be able to go back and and change their, their phone number or something, they would have to uh, completely complete another new um, uh, e-consent record. It's possible to record a video to embed within the consent survey to offer verbal instructions if, uh, if you so choose. Um, so it's, it's important to thoroughly test the e-consent process prior to official use um, from the perspective of both the researcher and the participant, try to um, trial as many different scenarios to ensure everything functions pro properly. Practice and plan through how you will guide the participant through the e-consent and try to anticipate and prepare for any stumbling box the participant may encounter. Um, for instance, what if they're hard of hearing or the internet is down what if they're late and they're, you know, they don't show up on time um, and they end up making you wait? Um, you want to have plans in place um, for all of this. Um, so briefly, some frequently asked questions that we've received. Um, do I need to inform the IRB before using consent and red cap? Yes. Um, you must indicate in your IRB sub submission or amendment that you're going to use the e-consent framework. Should I allow the save and return later option for respondents? No, please don't. Um, the RRB does not, does not permit that research participants have the ability to modify their e-consent once the, their survey has been submitted. Um, in, in the same way, in a similar way, when someone signs a paper informed consent and you know, their research assistant puts it in the file cabinet, it, the, again, the participant doesn't have any ability to modify that once they've uh, submitted it. So this is um, similar to that. Uh, the, in, the intention of the e-consent framework is to capture a true account of the consent process with documented auditing and traceability. Therefore, we strongly discourage the enabling of allow respondents to return and modify uh, completed responses. Can I change the e-consent template fields to be unrequired? This would need to be 
um, answered by the IRB if you're making fields unrequired and they are required on the template, um, likely the IRB would disapprove. However, the way you intend to administer the e the e consent may also play a factor with removing these requirements. Okay, and that's the end of the presentation today. Um, if you ever run into any issues or get stuck, please feel free to reach out to uh, us here at um, Redcap Support at lifespan.org. Um, uh, myself and a couple of other um, uh, helpful people, helpful folks are on the other end of that. And, and we'll do our best to answer your questions quickly. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, so I'll stop sharing. All right. <clears throat> These slides be emailed to us. Um, Hannah, uh, I can try to put together a, a portable slide deck. Um, although, again, this is gonna, this whole um, uh, video is, is being recorded. Um, but right now, you, you saw the I have so, the sort of screen captures embedded in my, in the PowerPoint, and so the um, the file is too large to share um, by email. But if I cut those out, then I can um, I can put some together and then. Um, Make sure to share it with, with you folks. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, the question is: Can this framework also be applied to the child assent? Yeah. The, uh, uh, just for, for brevity, I, I didn't go over that, but um, that is also set up for you to uh, to tailor to your needs. And um, yeah, but make sure you check that out. And, um, the, uh, we have another question. Uh, thank you, Dan. Um, what is the process to resend someone a consent if they stop the consent by accident? Um, again, since since it, the um, records are unable to be edited, um, uh, and, and the re the records are locked, it, it, if they if they're unable to complete complete it the first time, they would have to start all over again. In, Create an entirely new record and start from the beginning, um, um, uh, in, in in order to you know if they if they spelled their name wrong or put the wrong date of birth or something or or wrong email address. Um, and the the uh, another reason is anytime the <clears throat> uh, uh, for the e signature when those records are locked, if someone goes in and edits those record, it it's it erases the signature. Um, and so that's how um, th that's useful for accountability and, and record lo and, um, and logging and auditing, but um, it, it's a it's a it's something you'll have to overcome if someone makes a mistake. So it could be worth um, just mentioning, you know, to try to be careful um, because you can't go back and change your answers. Um, anybody else have any questions about e-consent? In the field, begin new section. I copy that. Uh, Igor, what, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by copy that. It says, um, in the field, begin new section with optional text. And I copy that in the consent form. Um, Igor, I'm not sure what you mean by copy that. Yeah, so the begin new section field. Yeah, you could you can begin a new section. Uh, yeah, you can you can add that in almost anywhere. Yeah. 
Sorry, Igor, if you if you want to send a um, a question to Red Cap support, um, maybe I can help you there afterwards. But yeah. Um, Thank everybody for coming today. Uh, is there any other um, is there any other questions about Ethan Sets? Uh, yeah, thank you, Iman, for putting this together. Yeah, thank you everybody for thank you everybody for attending. Appreciate the kind words. Yeah, so th again, thanks everybody for coming. If you if you do have any questions that pop up, feel free to send them to redcapsupport at lifespan.org and we'd be happy to help you out. <laughs>